Uh, I'm Christian Lane, and um, I, I'll be grimacing at my laptop now and then because some app wants to keep popping up and helping. Um, but I, I click stuff and do things. Um, I'm, I'm focused, <laughs> I'm focused um, primarily on um, making pretty things really, and um, nice stuff to listen to and nice stuff to look at. Uh, time was I made nice stuff to drink. Um, I still do that in my man cave a little bit, but I have some meat that has taken a turn, which I'm not happy about. Um, I, I want to touch on, Kat, what you said just before I forget. Um, do you know about Issue, I-S-S-U-U? -S -S -U -U? It's good stuff. And I also, um, if you ever uh, click around my forest of websites. I did a little flipbook code. You can do some pretty groovy stuff with CSS. So, uh, yeah, so thanks for coming. What we're going to do is um, we're going to look at three slideshows. I'm going to sit down and watch you react. No, actually, that's going to happen on the last one. So, uh, it, it seems timely. Um, Ebooks are popping up everywhere. Uh, the more you look around the search engines, you keep seeing references to .pdf and .mobi and .epub and what's, what's this all about. And it can be a little bit of a jungle to get into and informed. And what I've, what I've discovered in doing it for a while um, is that it can be awfully complicated. And you know, my mantra is simple math. I, let's, let's just kind of dumb it down. Um, oh, I do want to say, too, uh, I have been publishing um, for myself out of frustration as a, as a vanity publisher when I, when I created a little poetry book and I learned how to perfect bind it and make a paperback. And about 10 people you know, paid cash for it in a bar, and that was cool. Uh, but then I parlayed that into um, a procedure of doing that for others who knew about it. So I built, I built my own um, book press out of plywood and springs and carriage bolts and stuff. And I would sit up at night, and back when I met Tina, I'd be up all night, you know, pressing 50 books for Tom and pressing 50 books for Scott, and then, you know, just hitting it. But this was kind of before um, bookstores as we know them. It'd be like begging for a consignment hookup, you know. Now, I took a break from that for a while, and e-publishing came to be, so I said, well, let's, let's get back into it and be a little bit more efficient. Um, I came up with a few really good reasons to write ebooks. Uh, at this point, I think we're looking at about 7.32284 billion people on the planet. Everybody has an opinion. I'm just one, so don't carve this in granite. But in my opinion, one of the great reasons is that they're <laughs> they're accessible. You don't have to be connected. Once, particularly if you build yourself a really quick relationship with Kindle, get your content, then you're good to go. Pilot says, turn all your devices off, and you're like, mwahaha, it's cool. I'm in airplane mode, but I am uh, enjoying myself while we sit on the tarmac and wait for the wet of the turn. What did you say? Whatever I feel like I want to say. Oh, crap. Did you say something about my <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't. I forgot that I put that in there. <laughs> do, do you know who that was? No. That's Napoleon Dynamite. Now get out and check out Napoleon. So yeah, that's another. That's another reason. Kind of. Yeah. You 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 click stuff. You do things. You forget what you did. Um, yeah. And uh, here's proof. And you know you don't. If somebody says we're gonna move a mound of dirt, you don't bring a spoon. You don't need what he got, but yeah, I didn't get the reaction I wanted. Um, so a really good thing about ebooks when you when you have put your back into it and done a bunch of the stuff uh, with with your metadata, which I'll get into later, um, they're they're built on code. They're built on XML, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. They're SEO friendly. So if you're doing your SEO right, your SEO is when you when you tagged it properly, it's going to look like ebooks, great ebooks, ebook keywords, ebook book, ebook ebooks, ebooks, ebooks for you. You love ebooks. Google loves ebook. Yo, check my ebook. Ebooks on fleek. SEO is stupid, easy. Keywords for the win. AOL is my bay. Shiny happy book book. Long time specials all free. Oakley sunglasses. 
is yo Kardashian Tinder. <laughs> um, that's what you're going to do with your keywords. And then um, you're, you're, you, 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 want, you want to meta describe your content. Um, and in this case, I'm thinking this is going to get a lot of clout on Bing and on Google. The mythical ebook has been seen in the wild, sporting a coat of many spellings. It is an ecumenical yet strangely technology agnostic format. That is very nice. And that's actually true. I'm not sure you really want to, you know, use that kind of language, but it could stand out. So yeah, and they're pretty easy to bang out. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> I'll let you take that in. Just take that in. Let it let it let it breathe. Okay. Oh, you couldn't read it? Oh, this one? Uh, oh, snap. Uh, he couldn't keep on a shirt. She couldn't keep off her knees. Um, and stuff. You can, you can get... Uh, all, all this stuff's going to be available to you if you um, ping me. You're going to have to ping me. Um, and uh, they're templatable, and I, I will get into this, too. Um, funny thing happened on the sidewalk. We were rapping about um, about how to get into this game, and you know everybody's got a different reason for it. But if if your intention is to um, you know find a way to sort of syndicate what the people are looking for, much like e-commerce, um, it, it's th this stuff is really templatable, and this is a bona fide resource uh, for that. Um, and I'm, I'm not really going to opine. But I'll just tell you that you know, I have different stuff on my bookshelf. <laughs> um, the e-books open doors. And they empower Frady Cats that um, would otherwise perhaps not even endeavor to write. Because um, you know, a, a lot of us uh, ascribe to the notion that Get published! Oh my gosh! So does that mean I have to, I have to go to FedEx and print my 300-page manuscript and and you know try to go to a book fair and and FedEx all these things to all these strangers and you know spend my mortgage on that? No, it's it's a totally different thing, and you can get in the game. Um, and yes, I, this book is really on my bookshelf, and it's very um, it's, it's been very helpful for me to to. Uh, get motivated. And when I decided to write a wine book, remember, I was like waffling. I, I'm pointing at my wife. She was there. I was <laughs> waffling and waffling. And then I just, you know, I, num number one, um, I read this book. And then I, and then I read something by, um, you gave it to me, uh, How to Write a Book in 40 Days. It was, a, it, was a, it was an e-book, and it was like, kaboom, just sit down and do it, dude. So I got out my yellow pads, and, and off we went. Uh, and they're free to ship, so uh, there's more. I think these are reasons worth mentioning, but maybe not the best ones. Um, they, they can, but they don't necessarily have to be dirt cheap. You, when you take advantage of making them dirt cheap, you can you know, get them on volume. But I think it's very important to value your own work to a certain degree, right? So, you know, this free this, free that from the same author over and over, it tends to have a little bit of a flavor and you have to wonder what their strategy is. I mean, you put your back into it, you would like to get a couple of shekels, right? 69 cents, $1.50, 15 bucks, you know, if it's a white paper or whatever. Um, and if you, can everybody read what's on here? Okay, so that's Angus, yeah. Dirty Deeds. Yeah. Um, so, and yeah, it can give you street cred um, to write ebooks as well as paperbacks, as well as textbooks. Um, and, you know, Ted Danson, baby. Uh, yeah. They are pretty easy to, to uh, edit and republish on a number of platforms. This is the nice thing. If you, um, if you put under your hat the procedure of backing up your work and saving version after version, you'll see more about that later. But the great thing is that you don't have to write an ebook in Word. And in fact, um, if you use Word in a very lean fashion, it's good. 
um, and I'll explain more about that. But you can write it in InDesign, you can write it in brackets, you can write it in Quark, OpenOffice. Um, Illustrator, can anybody, can anybody remember what this icon is? I actually can't. I grabbed it. It's relevant, I swear to God. <laughs> I just can't remember what it was because I don't use it. Um, but yes, keep your, keep your hard copy. It was a long day on Saturday. Oh yeah, one more. Doge is legend and Doge awaits induction into the ebook world, so do the right thing. Uh, in this down here, says, heck, uh, is, anybody, is anybody digging um, Bork Bork, uh, you have done me a frighten on, <laughs> on Facebook? Yeah, no. that's the reference there. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna show you another slideshow. So this is, this is all about formatting your ebook and there are so many different ways to do it, but my, my goal is, for myself has been to choose the simple way and hopefully to impart uh, the same to you so that you don't get distracted by a lot of the um, potential off ramps because it gets really deep and I'll show you a little bit about where that can go. Oh snap. So let's get started. For the, the at, in the beginning, you 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 need to write the ebook, and it doesn't really matter um, how you do it. But my suggestions are either to write it in Microsoft Word, on whatever platform. It doesn't matter Apple or Windows. Same thing. Um, Open Office Writer is pretty good, but it does have its hiccups later on when you get to um, Smash Words formatting world, and I'll explain that a little bit more in depth. Try to default to, to, to Word is my suggestion. Save it in a few formats. Um, you can save it in a lot of different formats. I'll break those down to you um, shortly, but um, primarily you wanna save it as a doc, an HTML for a rainy day, and a PDF because um, your relatives are gonna want free copies. Uh, and then get ready to convert it later on in the process to EPUB, to Mobi, to KPF, which is um, the Kindle format. And that's actually been upgraded to something called KP8. I am not gonna get into that later, but I will allude to it in a different manner. And then um, XML is a good idea because um, XML is, ba it, it, you all know what HTML is. And its goal is to be interpreted by humans and by browsers. XML is machine readable quasi HTML. Save it as that, it's, it's good to have around. And then the NCX format, because that's, that's a format that you're going to use um, when you build your table of contents a little bit more easily than if you had not saved that format. But it won't rain on your parade because I'll show you about some tools that help you muddle through that anyway. So what's the ready part in Get Ready? The ready? Yeah, he says get ready to convert it to, and I know you're gonna tell us how to do that, but what's yeah. the, is there a get ready part? It or just you means- just save it as a doc, doc and HTML and a PDF, you're good to go. With, the, yeah. with, with my favorite tool, um, you will be doing that. Okay. So it's like put it in the back of your mind um, and know that you have a few days of work ahead of you. <laughs> okay. My clicker isn't clicking. No. There we go, you got it. Okay, so why, why all of the extra work? Why? Why can't you just, just um, you know, write it in Word and jam it into one of the one of the programs that are pretty cool, like Calibre, which I'm going to focus on. And you've you've heard me talk. I think you, Terry, you've heard me talk about it before. Um, there's other stuff like EPUB Maker and Moby Pocket and stuff. But um, you you need it. Trust me. Um, People read ebooks on a number of devices. iPads, iPhones, Android phones and tablets. Now the Samsung Gallery is its own animal, 
um, so it, it's not really part of the Android universe when it comes to reading ebooks. Um, desktop computers, of course, and I'm sure you've run into the opportunity. Um, like when I when I I bought Melissa's ebook, and um, I wanted to read it fast. I was on a desktop. I was on a dumb phone, and uh, but I got the Kindle e-reader downloadable for free. So that was the desktop uh, application for me. There's the Kindle, the Kindle Fire, the Kindle Paper, the Kindle Paper 3. There's the Nook, the Microsoft Reader, the Kobo Reader, the Sony Reader 300 and 900, the IREX, the Jetbook, what are they? Well, actually, those are, those are pretty nifty little gadgets that you can find if you, um, if you do a little searching um, through discussions on Gizmodo, or if you do some shopping on Newegg. Um, and so another reason for why all the work is people read, if people buy eBooks from a number of outlets, Barnes and Noble, Apple iBooks, Kobo, Inkterra, maybe these aren't ringing a bell, but they really are bona fide um, global outlets for ebook properties that you can view and purchase. 20,000 or more libraries use Overdrive uh, to ingest their ebooks and um, issue them forth. And here in Sonoma County, I gotta give a shout out to David Dodd, um, who works there and is really into supporting authors. He, he lobbied to get Overdrive um, loaded onto the system there, and that's, that's how I developed a relationship with him. And there's a, there's a global distributor called Baker and Taylor that um, distributes not just written material, but visual and musical as well, all over the place. When you check out an ebook from the library, do you have to check it back in? Mm -hmm. You're borrowing it. You're borrowing it. Okay. Yeah. There's some timer on it, so it gets broken. Yeah. So in the process of getting your, your ebook into a format, it, does it have to be significantly reformatted for every single one of these platforms? Or is it a, is it a minor technological, once you get it formatted for one major electronic format, it's fairly straightforward to put it in all the others? It's, it's fairly straightforward for the lower hanging fruit, which is Kindle and Amazon. Kindle, which is Amazon. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot more involved for Smashwords, but Smashwords is going to open up um, all these additional outlets that aren't the obvious ones, L including Nook, including the whole Apple and Kobo universe of things. So. Um, yeah, and, and besides, this, this may, yeah, well, I'm just going to read it because I, really, I can't really get confirmation from who in the back can read this. You'll get it all later, too. But um, extra work uh, has its own positioning statement. You may not be aware of this, but it's true. Extra work will provide a unique hair-pulling experience to 18 to 25-year-olds. Extra work will be positioned versus other popular styles of execution, uh, such as half-assedness, approximation, guesstimation, and its related modalities, and procrastination, uh, as the one to give them the confidence of knowing that it has long-lasting effects, provides select health benefits, and promotes copy breath. <laughs> you gotta have a path to know you're on it. And it gets deeper, but it doesn't really need to. Here's why. There is a sequence uh, to the whole thing. Um, and my humble estimation, um, well, you're, you're kind of building a website, really, when it comes down to it. And while HTML is part of the proofing process, it's for humans, as I mentioned before, and XML is for humans and machines. We want to bridge that gap when we smash words um, in order to broaden our, our reach. And um, I'm going to skip the last one. I'm going to get to content. Uh, content is first. And you want to um, you want to create the content in as bare bones a manner 
as you can, for starters, before you ice the cake. Else, no one's going to want to, the cake is going to have a piece of spatula in it, let's say. <laughs> and we'll s create your own styles, particularly, now this is going to be word-centric. Create your own styles. Don't rely on other styles that I'm going to deliver to you. I'm going to deliver to you about a hundred different awesome templates that I have tripped over, but they have their own styles and you want to make them, you want to strip those. Best way to do it is do it yourself up in the, in the toolbar ribbon. So you have full control over any residual elements that you may not be aware of and kick you, kick you out of the meat grinder. I'm going to tell you about the meat grinder. <laughs> TOC stands for a table of contents. You want to do that next. Um, really, really, you want to do that after you build your content because you're going to be relying on back and forth with, um, with tags, header tags. Uh, test each link separately once you've created that table of contents from chapter one to where it anchors and then back and use the Kindle previewer. I'll get into that later. <coughs> Just check them all, make sure they work. You don't, want, you don't want to be clicking on chapter three and wind up at chapter 15 and wonder why. So just go at it deliberately and then test it <coughs> yeah, with the Kindle previewer, which is so available, it's in your face. Now, um, yeah, and you know, it's academic. Sarah Connor is reading eBooks as well. Um, and you should too. Is she reading ebooks about pipe bombs? <laughs> 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 How to build a pipe bomb? <laughs> I'm sh probably. So yeah. <laughs> and why this? This came to me because, you know, um, she doesn't have to be connected to Wi-Fi to read the latest ebook that she got her hands on while she's in the facility. <laughs> Passing time, doing push-ups, getting buff. So how do we go about the grind now once we have um, created a, a reasonable um, word-based ebook ready property? Um, like I said, my favorite tool is Calibre. Uh, there's a download link uh, for where you can get it. Um, I'm fond of it for a number of reasons, but one of the things is um, I, I, I got turned on to, uh, to this by uh, James Marshall Berry. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm an addict uh, to Glary Utilities. Uh, even though it updates two, two, three times a week, it's friggin' annoying, but um, it's okay, it wants to help me. And one of the, one of the pieces of software that Glary uh, monitors and notifies me uh, uh, about an update for is Calibre. Why are there so many updates to this software? Um, the developer is named Covid Goyal. He, um, he writes a lovely blog and he's very supportive. I don't really know how he keeps the lights on because this stuff is always free, but he's really, really involved with his user community. And um, he doesn't capitalize the name of his software because uh, he got rid of his ego a long time ago. And that really, that says a lot to me. I don't know if that's the reason why, but I'm just reading into it. Um, and he, he, like I said, he, he, he's updating constantly, not because the software is buggy, like what you experience when Windows releases a new OS and then they catch up with patches, uh, you know, that song and dance. He's constantly augmenting his software, and he's really excited about cool bells and whistles to help authors do their thing better. So that's, that's merely one of the tools um, that I've used. There are so many more. Um, Christian, are you writing the book in Word first and then using Calibre to help you move it to different platforms? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What your priorities are going to be when you dive into Calibre is, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> um, and a little bit of a statistical study in, in, in my experience about where you're going to spend the most time as you go through certain phases of it. Um, 
you are going to want to handle metadata, basically stuffing up the back end of your ebook so that it's going to um, it's going to fly right uh, when it's published. Um, you're you're going to spend a bunch of time on output. Um, what the the, the, basically the formats that you are going to want that resulting material to be in and how it really is going to behave. Um, you're going to spend time on layout because once you start uh, formatting and converting, your layouts are going to shift. And when I get into smash words, I'm going to give you some tips on how to protect yourself against uh, situations like Chapter four just ended halfway down the page, and there's chapter five starting halfway down the page. That's ghetto. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fix that. Um, and previews of your work back and forth are going to consume a lot of your time. These, are, these, these little bar graphs are broken down in time, and it's, um, this is actually, it's boring, but um, it's, it's my experience. The blue bar is a figurative day one. You, you may jam, th jam through the whole process in three days, or it might be three weeks. But during that first phase, you're going to spend less time on metadata, a little bit more on the second day, a little bit more on the third day, and a little bit less on the fourth day when you're previewing. Similarly, on day two, um, you're going you're gonna to start a little bit lower on metadata. You're going to see a, a big spike between days two and three, and then back down, not to the complete safe dome, zone at zero. I can tell you um, I pulled a lot of hair out because I didn't get to zero during preview time. And then in, d in day three, um, almost consistent between metadata and output, a little bit less of a, of a break on, on layout, and then boom, back up at preview time. You're going to be in a wedding party. You want to make sure that your shirt is ironed and your shoes are shined. Did that, was there an analogy there that you can work with? <laughs> OK. Um, now, this is a dive into Calibre. A little bit, and I'm not going to get super in depth. I want I want to um, empower you to go through the processes. But some of the key stuff that you're going to see is um, up there. There's your title. Up there, that's y y author um, title. You're gonna. Um, here's where you're gonna get your your ebook cover files. And for that, this is, this is really easy. There's no lesson necessary. When, when you've created a, a cover in, say, Illustrator or InDesign, and you've, um, you know, you've exported um, a PDF um, at 100% view, <laughs> so your margin's not all white, <laughs> um, just, just grab the, <laughs> can you tell? Just grab, <coughs> just grab the front cover. And you know, crop it out. That's all you need for an ebook cover. Um, and in here, the hot stuff is IDs and tags. Your your publishing date, you know, it's fine. I mean, the the platforms are, you know, the outlets and stuff are going to read those anyway. They're going to know. You don't, but I mean, if you really want to be cool, you can say April 5th, 1876. You've been around the block. Um, <laughs> tags, 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 tags. Every time you see something that you can tag, mindfully, of course, but tag the snot out of it. Uh, for instance, see something that you can, a paragraph, a chapter, a, a phrase, a sentence. A, a phrase. If it's a, like this, this was a book about wine. Mm -hmm. um, and. Mind you, this is this is not a snapshot of my past work. I actually did it right, but I opened up Calibre just the other day, and I said, oh, "Let's let's start to convert this again." All this data went away, but I would put wine, Christian Lane, sexy Spanish dancer, wine, wine, <laughs> advice, um, consultant, bottling, tasting notes, Robert Parker, 
all that, all that stuff. It's all relevant because people that search for those things, they see me. What's the, uh, the heading after tags? What's the next one down? It's IDs. IDs? What are they asking for there? <sighs> I forgot. <laughs> I'm not going to bullshit there, you. Do they have like a tool tip on there or something? Yes. Okay. Um, a, a great thing about this software is it's very robust on the help um, end of things. Okay. And as a publisher, do you just put yourself? Or? Yeah. Or unless you want to go under a, a vanity umbrella. Like when I publish books, I call it Cognoscenti Press. Because that was the identity that I used when I pressed paperbacks. And you know, why not just use it? You know? um, it it's a little bit more cred, I think. Um, it looks like you got a publisher. <laughs> but we're self-publishing because, you know, we didn't want to waste 14 years right. trying to do that. Um, another, thi this, is, this is really hot stuff. Yes, Terry? Can you make it bigger? Yeah. Would that I could. Um, could does anybody know? Okay, yeah, that. Sorry, Michelle. That's okay. We're not Going. That better? Yeah. Okay. This is the next, um, the next layer that you're going to dive into uh, within Calibre, and I put stars um, in relative order of their importance on the stuff that you really want to spend time on. So, I am H O. Heuristic processing is, is time that you want to spend uh, mindfully. Um, structure detection is a biggie as well. Um, look and feel is going to be pretty important. Table of contents or TOC. Can I say TOC now that you know all about publishing? TOC? You know? TOC. Yeah, okay. Um, that's, that's important. It remains important, but it's a little bit less important because you've been proactive. Um, in creating that document in Word. What does heuristic processing mean? I don't know. It is, what is the definition of heuristic? Determined by experience. I just made that up. <laughs> 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 Sounds good. Very good. Yeah, I'm impressed. Yeah. My yeah. heuristic yeah. research is experiential yeah. research on the part of the researcher. In the movie 2001, HAL was for heuristic algorithmic Loser. It's <laughs> more your interpretation of how your user, your readers, who look at and use your. Yeah, they oh. write a book. That's well, facts. well, what, <laughs> what it's going to get into is um, is decisions uh, you want made about things like line spacing, which is really, really huge in okay. ebook so formatting heuristic. and image placements. Heuristic means serving to indicate or point out, stimulating interest as a means of furthering investigation. Oh, oh that cleared it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of words just to say curiosity. Oh, Engaging okay. a person to learn, discover, understand, or solve problems on his or her own. <laughs> oh. I, I can contribute one definition of heuristic, which is that in the context of an algorithm, it tends to mean that the purpose of the algorithm is not to find the absolute perfect solution, but to find a solution that is practical in the context of the problem that is being tried to solve, so that the idea is that it's good enough. It's the good enough answer, not the absolute perfect answer. Close, that's close the enough for government work. That's the. That's, right. that's, that's right. so good. That's that's an anthem. For this stuff, because okay. you you'll you'll find. Try this, try that, and um, you know that's not working. That doesn't look right. So I'm going to go back and smack away at it again. It, there's a there's a series of sometimes a very frustrating, sometimes entertaining frust, uh, process of trying things and seeing how they look. And if you have the um, if you have the ability to preview your work <coughs> on a number of different devices, you can you can do that. But you don't have to go too far afield if you're going to take it all the way through Smashwords because Smashwords is going to 
handle that for you if you adhere to it really, really strictly. Um, now, this part's key. If you don't want to be that guy and you don't want to waste time, I wish my clicker worked. At the time of outputting your work in Calibre, after you've gone through all the jive, that I, I would just really like you to dive in and, and try yourself, because I could, I could do that for three hours and we don't have time. The important thing is you're going to see a lot of options for output. And uh, it's important not to get um, too uh, mystified by all of your options. Um, we'll, you'll see things like HTMLZ, PCR, zip. What would you want a zip file of your ebook for? Um, PDB, don't know what it is. FB2, lit, AZW3, don't know. Um, they're just, it's, it's just TMI for what you really want to be doing. Um, there's there's, um, there's a, a, a format um, that's been resuscitated from ancient Urdu. It's called GGE. Uh, it's, it stands for God's green earth and everything else spotted upon it. Um, so for our practical purposes right now, uh, I, I'm not assuming that everybody here is a noob, but if we, if we imagine that we're noobs and starting anew, what is relevant to us right now, um, my suggestion, is EPUB, PDF, and HTML. Throw in a docx. Uh, just to keep around for other purposes. Um, and while I'm on that, definitely put just dot doc up on a pedestal. That is your friend because it's a clean slate from which you can begin um, again. Amazon and Kindle and Smashwords will, um, will make suggestions to you about what your appropriate actions are to take at that time. So again, you don't have to, you don't have to empower yourself in the beginning and try to f try to export all these different uh, formats. I did that. I, ex I I dumped out like 13 versions, and then I found I never had any use for them because I was going on to Smashwords. Well, and even before that, because I was going on to Kindle and Amazon, where it's just, it's just so much easier than all this jazz. But COVID writes this stuff into Calibre because, because he's a geek. And, and maybe he, he even wants to empower us to, um, to uh, form our own companies like Smashwords and do it ourselves. I don't want to do that, <laughs> but you might. Hey, Christian, do you or anybody else here have experience um, using Google Docs as a basis for e an ebook? I don't, I'm curious if they have any, like, helpful tools or something, or if it's as bare bones as you need it to be at first, or? My wife she went right to Word because of the inconsistency in formatting. Yeah, I was, was wondering if that only might be reason. Because, yeah, when I wrote my <laughs> book, it, I wasn't really using Google Docs yet, and so it's all it's still handy. Yeah. So don't give up my Microsoft subscription just yet. Yeah, or you know, I mean, just like you got Photoshop 6, somebody's got a copy. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go publish um, on Kindle. Let's do that. Go to Kindle Direct. Um, there's the URL. It's uh, kdp.amazon.com. And um, set your book up using its built-in tools. And, uh, and I know that you can attest that wasn't as easy as it might seem, because your output doesn't look like you're expecting it to. Um, a, a lot of it is, a lot of it is the, the pre-pressed stuff that, that occurred before. But um, you know, it's, it's, it's really helpful to, enable, uh, to allow Kindle to enable you um, with their suggestions. And then, um, you know, you can, um, it, assuming that you exported HTML, you can, you can upload that and, and give it a whirl. Um, watch out for um, page breaks and image placement, but you, you'd probably be OK. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the Kindle ingestion thingamajig um, 
will mess around with your code a little bit less if you, uh, if you submit HTML to them. Um, and it may be a little bit um, more um, true to your desired output. Set your author page up. The, this is where the this is where the goodies are, and it's it's a really good really good idea not to uh, neglect this marketing engine that Kindle has set up for you because it, it really it isn't that easy to go back and find it later. So if you've got a little bit of time carved out, maybe an hour, maybe forty five minutes, whatever. If you have stuff at the ready, like your bio and nice photos and various things like that, eh, set it up. Set it up early, and then when you can tag something, yeah, tag the snot out of it. Um, if you uh, if you are um, publishing a book about um, the evolution of uh, the New Balance business plan, which is a very interesting company, uh, by the way. Um, but um, you might you you might even throw in tags um, like work boots, footwear, arch support, shoelaces, foot odor, because you know. And these guys will tell you um, you're predicting human search behavior, and you're you're um, you know you're gaming the system in advance, uh, it, assuming you're not throwing ad money at it use the search engines with great leverage. Now, if you want to create a paperback, um, you can go to createspace.com. That's just one of the options, but it is, uh, it is an Amazon affiliate, and it's plugged into this whole universe really nicely in that once you've gone through the paperback publishing process, you're going to be offered Kindle options right there, two birds, one stone. It's not the only game in town. Um, I, uh, I have um, looked pretty heavily at Lulu in the past, and the cogs just didn't match my, my wishes, but it's a solid company, too. Um, double your publishing power. They want to help you. Yeah. One thing about Amazon, though, I had a friend who did that. She wrote a children's book, and when it came back, half of it was porno. True story. Oh. You mean the, the printed copy? The printed copy. That's bizarre. Oh, share. Their publishing space. Oh, they share. That's awkward. And so literally, yeah, slightly. literally, half of this. And unfortunately, they didn't catch it until they shipped it to customers. Oh. 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 Proof your work. Proof your work. Yeah. But uh, one, uh, yeah, the but print run on Tuesday morning is going to be a different one from the print run on Wednesday. Right. Wow. Right. Fascinating. Yeah, she still is devastated by the whole thing. Yeah. Because yeah. it was all the parents who got it. Oh, my. So, wow. Made for, and their response was something like, I think, I think her question was, you print porno? <laughs> and they were like, yeah. And she was like, oh, it would have been nice to know that. I probably wouldn't have put my book through, you know, your service. Yeah. So... Wow. They're How about funny. that? Yeah. And I think they did direct mail for them. <laughs> it ended up then going through the Amazon system, and they never even saw the book to prove it. So just oh, be careful. We're yeah. Be careful about. And so which service is that? Is that the Create Space <laughs> service? <laughs> Well, I, I would assume so. She, to, to create a paperback, she probably went through Create Space. She did. Yeah. You can you can dive natively into Amazon to create a, a paperback. You can do that with CDs and DVDs too, which is really nifty um, if, if you want to be you know transmedia and multi-channel. But uh, that's wild. That's a really solid reason to proof your work. But of course, um, also get a proof copy if you're doing paperbacks. Because sometimes your margins are all corny, you know. Like when I got my first proof back, I had I had like you know a half an inch of margin space, and that was not what I laid out. It's it's just you know the the trimming isn't necessarily the same way all the time. And also you can look at the quality of the of the trim of the cover. It could be all shabby with with some little bits on the on the edge there, or you know, or maybe your artwork doesn't go edge to edge. Because, you know, just because. It could be on your end, but it can also be on their end. So always proof, right? Um, and then, you know, so once, once, you sub once you've submitted um, to Kindle uh, and to CreateSpace, which is this. <laughs> Has anybody ever used it? 
Oh, it's pretty neat. It's flash, man. It's flash. <laughs> Still, yeah. Um, you you um, you get in and, and uh, do an electronic proof of your work, um, and you can look at it page by page. Um, kind of kind of cool, but um, if you if you choose instead to proof via uh, paper copy, and a lot of writers will say um, they catch more typos if it's in paper if it if it's on paper. Um, you know, uh, unless you're really deft at walking away from your work and coming back with a completely clear mental slate, I don't know that many reader, uh, writers that are, but there's something magical about having the paperback in your hand that looks different than it did on screen. Um, so there's a little bit of a, a waiting period. <coughs> Excuse me, thank you. There's going to be a little bit of a waiting period. Um, with, uh, with CreateSpace, um, you're, you're generally looking at about 48 hours of turnaround time. Um, and what the, the, the feedback you get back is um, this is what's wrong on page this and on line that. So it's really transparent. Um, the same thing um, happens with feedback from Kindle. But that feedback from Kindle is much more rapid. You can often get feedback uh, from them um, within the hour. It just kind of depends. Sometimes it's more like four hours, but not bad. And sometimes it takes more than a day. It's a, I think it's a matter of, of, of workflow and workload. So you hurry up and wait. Um, you remember that PDF that you saved? So go ahead and uh, write a bulk email to friends and family um, and strangers. Even um, to people whose business cards you found uh, on the parking lot, add them to that list and um, throw a PDF at them for free because you're not in this to monetize. Um, but w during that waiting period, the, the machines are basically learning your content. And depending on the, the, the strictures that you've set up, um, they're translating that for different devices. So that's pretty cool that somebody is working in the background. You, as a matter of fact, you can get a human being on the phone um, if you're really pulling your hair out um, through the create space process. Um, it'll be a Pakistani named Brian, but, <laughs> but generally very supportive. I think they're a really strong company. And I think that one of the reasons they're very strong is they recognize um, the, the popularity of publishing. And so they've built the infrastructure to support that. And, and pretty much to compete with Lulu and some other upstarts, one of, the, one of whom um, I just got turned on to yesterday. Susan. Do you recommend CreateSpace if the book is heavily, has a lot of photographs? Sure. Yeah. Um, what you're. <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You cannot, um, you cannot have them print, um, say, you know, 25 full color pages and then 200 black and white. You have to go all in or all out. So um, it, it affects your, your margins. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a guide with you about strategizing your costs and your desired um, margins as well, and actually um, what the right path may be. I actually released um, my first book um, that contained color content, but I printed it all in black and white just because. It was hard, it was a little bit heartbreaking, but it wasn't so crucial that those graphic elements needed to be seen in color. Uh, and that's another reason um, why that ebook has been pretty popular, because people can see the, the colors. Now, there are, while you're waiting um, for that approval, and if you get approved on the first time, yay, that's really cool. There are other things that you can do to occupy uh, that time, like you know, life and stuff. But um, if you want to play with some other desktop tools, these are, these are neat things that I have um, encountered uh, that, to me, serve um, a couple of purposes, one of them being workflow. Uh, one of them being speed, and one of them being just versatility. 
um, how many times have you wanted to put out some content that has a little bit of embedded audio or embedded video or some pop-up tool tips? You know, it used to be that that kind of software used to, um, it, it was really kind of disruptive, you know, six, seven years ago. Um, but it's, it's not that big a deal now. So um, these are all Kindle products. Textbook creator, the advantage, sorry, that um, that's a little bit hard to read. Audio video, audio video embeds um, and pop-ups. This particular piece of software is um, is a standalone uh, piece that you can download and install, um, OS agnostic, and uh, it's in beta, but it's working. It's working really well, and it's a lot of fun to mess around with. And what what happens when you um, get through the process? It's like it, it does a whole lot of the work for you, and you just press go and you're published, it, maybe even prematurely, but it, it's that slick. Comic Book Creator, um, similar thing. It's nice because it gets you uh, richer formats, a, a few more different uh, formats of graphics, and um, you, can, you can insert some navigation guides inside there too. And then the, uh, the kids book creator, again, rich formats and um, awesome for the double page spread. A lot of people are monetizing these days or just expressing uh, by writing kids books. Um, and a lot of different um, creative people are coming together um, into that format, writers and artists who are combining their strengths. Pretty, pretty excellent thing. I have not, um, I have not made, um, either of the latter two, but I'm in the middle of um, creating a textbook. I just didn't have all the content. And I may, I may repurpose this stuff and create a textbook uh, from it, because I don't really have anything else to say other than this. I, you guys are tired. Um, so yeah, as I said a hundred times, Kindle is owned by Amazon. Um, here are some of the compelling reasons why um, we want to at least give uh, this platform a little bit of airplay in our lives. Um, shoppers check Amazon 12% less often than they Google the item that they're looking for. Um, Amazon at this point uh, boasts at least 250 million members. Um, 60 million of them are Prime members. Um, you can market even more to Prime members, um, and you know you can ship eBooks to them for free uh, <laughs> by drone. Um, the the current estimate on Amazon sales revenue to authors is about 100 billion. And there are about, and this is up for debate, I want to dig into this, Mark. Um, last estimate was there are about 15 books added to Amazon every hour. Um, I may have speed read that data. It might be every minute. I would say that. But I'll come back and put it on Facebook. Uh, so, you know, I got next. Does anybody know what this is from? No. Hip hop heads? No. KRS One. <laughs> That's the end of that. Smashwords is, is um, best described as an expanded distribution network um, that, that services on a, on a wholesale and retail level um, a, a zillion additional um, marketplaces that um, Amazon and Kindle don't. Um, what's really, what's really um, delightful but sometimes disturbing um, is, is that once you've, once you've used Smashwords and got your work out there that way, um, you, can, you, you can Google your book. And these days, I'm, I'm getting through several pages, but there was a time when I was ranting um, uh, about dis uh, re retail booksellers offering free downloads of my shit. And I said, who are you? And I don't even know you. How did this happen? Um, I, I made peace with it because I told the algorithms in the beginning uh, to go ahead and do that and it was okay. Um, when I actually talked to uh, human beings at about six of those outlets that I did a little witch hunt on, um, nobody really knew what I was talking about. 
a lot of it is uh, just listing content um, to look like a bona fide bookstore, but they didn't really have my material. But it's okay, it's search clout. So, um, so it's like a syndication type thing? It is, yeah. Um, it uh, the the content gets delivered to uh, to the end user um, whether they're um, just a regular consumer or um, a wholesale um, book buyer um, and w what's really nifty about that last part is that the people that participate in and put on book fairs are are looking for content that that shows basically good metrics um, they're they're not really curating from the heart they're just you know kind of looking at numbers so um, okay. yeah Thank you. Uh, I guess a, a couple of questions I, I know I'm on Amazon I've heard people um, initially selling their book for like 99 cents and, um, and inviting everybody that they know to get it and encouraging them to make reviews mm -hmm. and um, my understanding is that that boosts your visibility on Amazon? It sure does. Doing yeah. Um, <laughs> a lot of people in here have seen me beg for reviews. Um, it, you don't have to, um, you can get a review from a person who has not purchased the book before. Mm -hmm. um, but but rumor don't past purchases also help boost you as far as your visibility on Amazon? I don't know. I know that if you're Doug's nodding. Yes. Th then yes. Um, I kn I know that you're um, if you if you participate in the in the Amazon marketplace um, as a buyer and a seller, and you always rate what you buy, and you ask for ratings and stuff. You're you're um, standing in that community stands out, and I think that that's got to have some kind of a result, some sort of um, authority attached to it when you go ahead and issue a review and then maybe ask for one. I've seen something similar where I was given the opportunity to download it for free on the promise that I was going to leave a review and I don't and I downloaded it through Amazon and later on they had a price and I don't know how they worked that out with Amazon but my review was legitimate. I don't remember if it said purchased or not because that would be a big deal if it said that. I should go back and look but it, I downloaded it through, they didn't yeah. send us the copies and they had multiple people do that. Uh, you know, for like a couple of days they did that mm -hmm. to boost their rating and yeah. it was a legitimate strategy that they were using. And they weren't trying to be sneaky about it, they were being honest about it. They said, these people who are already on the list, you know it's there, go get it. You get two days to go get it and then it's going to be whatever it is, five, ten bucks. Out. That's a condition that the, that the author can set up. And you can you can learn a lot by creating promotions, putting time limits on them, um, monkeying around with the price a little bit, having it expire. It's worth trying. Sure, you say that you got a free copy. Yeah, you have to look. That's why I don't it's remember like, if it I says that or not. Seen. It says verified purchase Even for ones that free? like it can tell that you actually downloaded it through Amazon or whatever. Yes, I remember seeing reviews though that say the reviewer got. I wonder if mine says it's free copy, not download. I've never seen that before, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll have to look. But I know that, yeah, it does say verified purchase, and then the ones that, like, if you gave it to a friend or sent it to somebody to read, right. they can still go and leave a review, but it just won't say anything. There. I'll post on Facebook what mine says, because I'm curious, too, to know what type of. Well, if you've sent somebody an advanced copy, you have that ability. You can, you can, um, you can invite 100 people to read an advanced copy and ask them to review it and that'll show up. That's how I got a couple of them. It may have been what he did. He was a, he, he's putting his imprint as well and, and he, he has a kind of, that was a, he's pretty idealistic. He would do those big things. He's trying to make them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's well. a photographer. He writes books about photography, so. And free stands out. Uh, okay. So. Uh, it reminded me talking about the independent booksellers. Um, I have uh, good fortune to have chatted with a couple of people who work in that industry and go to the book fairs. And I, and I asked them, I said, What should I do? And they said, Well, people are much more likely to pick up your work to publish it 
if you have some kind of uh, feedback, like you're talking about online presence, and she suggested starting a blog. So, you know, I started posting things like chapter by chapter. Um, but the feedback I got from people as well, we have to we have to create an account on Tumblr, and so you know basically that stopped them in their tracks. It was too hard. Um, <coughs> so the thing you're talking about with doing digital republishing, giving out advanced reader copies, is exactly the same as what the publishers do, because um, a lot of these independent booksellers are given tons of advanced reader copies of people that work there, right? Um, any idea about if? the Amazon tape format is, would have a similar function to creating a blog, and if so, what sites of all the myriad out there might be user friendly and writer, you know, lots of writers working on them? No, you get, you get an author page when you set up, but there's, there's not a blog there. Okay. <coughs> there, um, there. There's a lot of space to, to say what you want, and you can even embed um, multimedia on that page and you can link it to um, your social accounts, but mm -hmm. not as a blog. May I suggest Wattpad? Um, I'm not attached um, to the blog format, by the way. It's just a word that you know, describes something, right? Yeah. Wattpad, though. Wattpad. You ever heard of uh, Twilight? Yeah. The author um, developed grassroots support by um, posting little sneak excerpts of, well, not even sneak excerpts, just um, just thoughts, you know, and, and ask the community, what do you think about this stuff I'm writing? Is it any good? And, and right. one thing led to another, and so she, she um, started issuing chapters and leading people on and developed this really good um, fan base that then uh, created, um, created some SERP later, some SERP clout. Right. Um, and that, um, I'm sure that it just kind of avalanched, and then then movie rights and. Is Wattpad good for nonfiction too? I mean, I know it's got a huge fiction following. Yeah, 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 I don't know if it's any good for for nonfiction. It's definitely very good for fiction, but um, I don't know. Do you um, uh, are you a longtime reader of the Bohemian? Um, you know who Daedalus Howell is. Used to be a columnist in that. Now he's indie. Um, but uh, he 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 writes both fiction and nonfiction, and uh, he's an active user of Wattpad. And I can get you his number sometime. And he's very cool. He would chat with you, tell you what's up. Well, I know that I have a high schooler who's very much into it. Mm -hmm. they, they're very much into it, but it, it's mostly fiction so, that I see. Yeah, that's pretty what it's, what it's famous for. Yeah. Do you publicize in other ways than you mainly rely on your on SEO and keywords um, and, and you know, Google and Amazon search, or do you do have other methods of publicizing? That you, use? Uh, you know, do as I say. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they just didn't make enough hours in the day. Um, I. I, I, I connected um, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook, and Tumblr, and I, I use those until people are like, dude, shut up. <laughs> uh, I could definitely do a better job of it, but I'm very self-conscious about um, not um, basically developing an editorial content, uh, an editorial calendar that is rich with um, edifying content, you know? Um, maybe some people in here know I try to uh, ha have this persona of always trying to help mm -hmm. in whatever way. Um, but I, I'm not big on copying and pasting mm -hmm. that much. I would rather develop mm -hmm. my own content and it's mm -hmm. just like it's just a matter of um, hours in the day. One of these days I'll get that down and then um, and then you know do the old. Oh and by the way I don't know, if you're bored, <laughs> read my shit, I don't care, be coy, you know, that's, that's, that's what you do, right? <laughs> so blessed. <laughs> now, in my next number, I'd like to return to the classics, perhaps the most famous classic in all the world of music.
going to give you the style guide. I'm going to give you all these things. Thanks for listening. <laughs> All right.